Get off the right wheel. Hey you guys, what's going on out there in Facebook land? I am actually about to deliver a live training, hence why I have the headphones in. And uh, we're gonna be going in. We're gonna be teaching on how to deliver an effective presentation. So please stand by while we go ahead and get ready to present. The recording has started. Here we go. Awesome, awesome. It is 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And welcome to tonight's Sunday Night Advanced Training Call. This call is designed to give you the insights, the strategies, and uh, the know-how to build this business and maximize it, to help you maximize your income in the shortest amount of time. And it's brought to you in terms of our top leadership on the team, senior vice presidents and above. And so the gentleman I have a, a tremendous amount of pleasure of introducing is a gentleman I, I, I've known for some years now. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. He knows 110% of what it takes to be successful in this opportunity. Five links powered by Oxygen CCD. He loves helping people. He's cash checks, a lot of checks in his business. And most importantly, he loves helping people and he has fun doing it. I would, I would categorize him as a shark slash dolphin because he, he, he likes to make money, but he likes to have fun simultaneously. So uh, coming to you by way of, of uh, the East Coast, now relocated to the West Coast, uh, we have top producing senior vice president, Mr. Ricardo Suber. Ricardo, are you on the line? I am here. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yep, loud and clear. The call is all yours. All right, awesome. Well, first off, I definitely want to give it back up to you, to our Diamond SVP, Mr. Tupac Derenicourt. You know, for the past um, nearly decade, um, you've been a, a, a true leader, a true inspiration, um, someone who has always shown the way by going first. And so I'd be remiss um, definitely not to give you your flowers and your kudos for all that you continue to do for us, let alone this um, phenomenal platform, which has been in existence since I uh, was brand new. So thank you so much and uh, appreciate the, uh, the, the platform for tonight. So that being said, ladies and gents, um, I decided to go ahead and do this presentation on how to actually deliver an effective and really a perfect presentation. For the past, again, nearly decade, I've really um, dedicated a lot of my energy in this business to being able to translate and relate the message of not only network marketing um, and free enterprise, but specifically why Five Links, now powered by Oxygen, is the right opportunity. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into some specific pointers. My um, my request for all of you right now is whether you're listening to the recording or live, please take out a piece of paper and a pen. Definitely take some notes. I'm sure there's going to be some things in here that are review for you, but I guarantee there are going to be some things that maybe you haven't thought of. So definitely make sure you're taking some notes. So just a little bit about me for all of you who may not be familiar with who I am. Again, my name is Ricardo Suber. I am actually a native of the Boston area, lived in several different cities, spent a large part of my life in upstate New York where I worked for one of the world's largest computer companies. I was a software support engineer, thought I would never leave, and it was what I considered a dream job. It allowed me to purchase my first condo, and it seemed like you know things were just in this honeymoon phase. And um, unbeknownst to me, um, April 7th of 2011, I was called into my boss's office and she let me know that that day was going to be my last day at that company. And I really had a paradigm shift. I was hurt. Um, I was disgusted. I felt like the rug got pulled from underneath me. And I decided that never in life again would I ever be dependent on one source of income. And it was probably it was a blessing in disguise. It was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because I realized that I could take my power back. And at the same time, there was a gentleman who kept trying to get me to take a look at this business right here. He kept trying to send me videos and such, and I never looked at them, but he just so happened to follow up with me about three weeks after I got let go. And when he followed up, 
I took a look and immediately I got started. It was amazing. This, this business was a blessing. And so um, just shy of about five years later, I hit um, the position known as senior vice president, got a lot of benefits, got a car allowance. I was able to upgrade my, my uh, 2006 Honda uh, Civic with 231,000 miles um, to a BMW 328i, was able to go on an all expenses paid vacation and all the company perks and benefits along with the nice boost in, in, in income. But what's even most important to me is being able to personally and professionally develop as a result of phenomenal mentors um, such as Diamond SVP, Tupac de Renacourt, Platinum Senior Vice President Jovens Moncourt, and scores of other leaders in the upline, sideline, and even no line. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. Um, I'm also broadcasting live on Facebook Live if, in case you guys want to see what I'm looking like because this is all I'm presenting and I want to go ahead and make this real. So that being said, um, how do you perfect presentation skills? And, and in fact, why is it important? In network marketing, we are in front of people. And I know for most people in the country, let alone the world, most people fear public speaking more than anything. And so that was one of the reasons why I felt that we should really get down into the crux of having the ability to deliver an ineffective presentation. So my first tip, and I have about 20 tips here. First tip is you want to listen to great presenters. So whether you're new or not, if you're not used to or very comfortable delivering a good presentation, I urge you to listen to phenomenal presenters like Diamond Senior Vice President Tupac de Renacourt, like um, Platinum Senior Vice President Coach K, Camilla Collier Mullen, or um, there's so many. Um, Senior Vice President Tillman Doe Jr., he's probably my favorite presenter in the company because of his style. But I listen to all sorts of presenters. And so if you're in this business, definitely make sure you're carving out at least three to four days out of the week and listen to the opportunity webinars. Listen to different presenters because you're going to want to borrow different techniques, the way they, they say certain things. And you can incorporate that and adopt that into your own style. But listen to great presenters and um, even across different industries. Listen to people such as Tony Robbins. Another great one, um, rest in peace, he's been gone for several years now, but to Jim Rohn, the way he delivers his talks, the way he keeps you on the edge of your seat. So listen to those folks. And then, and then here's a hack. A hack is, this is something that I do. I think we all know what a timeshare is, right? A lot of times they'll lure you onto a resort. You can stay for, for real cheap or for pennies on the dollar. And in return, you have to sit through one of those presentations. I love doing that. Number one, I love getting discounts. But then the other thing is you hear some phenomenal presenters. It's so hard to sell a timeshare. So these people are really good at their craft. They're really trained on how to deliver an effective presentation. So I implore you, next time you're invited by one of these vacation companies, you get that strange phone call, listen in. Listen to how they're presenting on the phone. And then if you feel so inclined, attend a live timeshare presentation because I promise you, you're going to see some things that you can incorporate into your business. That's a hack for you guys, all right? So that's number one. Number two is you want to smile, all right? When you are presenting, smiling comes through. When you're frown, I, and, and I don't care if you had a bad day, psych yourself up, listen to some good music, but do what you have to do to actually smile. When you're presenting and you're smiling, people can tell. People can tell if you um, have some positive energy and that radiates, okay? So make sure you smile. Number three is you wanna make good eye contact. You might be saying to yourself, okay, well, Ricardo, we're in this pandemic. I'm doing a lot of my presentations over Zoom or even on the phone. How does eye contact come into play? Well, first off, if you're on the phone, you're off the hook. But on Zoom, what you wanna do is you wanna look at either at the camera or near the camera because you have this more interpersonal exchange with that person, even if they're not speaking. You wanna look right into the camera. Don't look off. If you have slides, I understand. 
practice and make sure that you get your slides onto the screen where the camera is, all right? And I know in PowerPoint, when you present, if you have multiple screens, you can actually make it so that you're looking at the slides right beneath the camera. So you have that interpersonal sort of thing. People notice that and it makes it feel more real. People are less likely to lose focus. And so if you're looking at me on Facebook Live, I'm looking right into the camera, okay? And um, one thing I'll also say is if you're presenting to a live audience, whether it's a one-on-one, -on -one, a two-on-one, -on -one, or a room full of people, a great technique, especially if you're dealing with multiple people, is you want to kind of scan the room. And I know looking at people can be like really nerve wracking, right? You kind of heart might start to beat a little bit. So what you may want to do is you may want to just focus on people's foreheads. Just go from forehead to forehead, scan the room, look around as you're making different points. And that will really help you deliver an effective presentation where people feel included, okay? So that's making effective eye contact, okay? Number four is you want to stand up. But guess what? I'm sitting down right now. So if you have to sit down, because I have to sit down right now, at least sit up straight. It comes through in your voice. You're, you're able to speak more from your diaphragm versus speaking from your chest or, or really nasally. So make sure you're sitting up straight. It allows you to project your voice better and it just comes through much more effectively. That's number four, okay? Number five is you wanna practice. Practice preferably in front of somebody who is friendly or a group of people who can give you friendly feedback or advice. At least practice over the phone, but the more you practice, the, the, the faster you start to approach what we call perfect, the, the faster you improve. So practice in front of others, make sure that they are somebody who can deliver feedback and here's a great technique. I learned this from Eric Worre. Eric Worre, the author of GoPro, The Seven Steps to Becoming a Network Marketing Professional. He says, look, one of the best ways to actually get people into your business is to say, hey, this business is definitely not for you, but you mind if I practice you know, my script with you? Mind if I practice my presentation with you? I promise, guys, I promise. Some of those people they're gonna be so much more interested in what you're saying rather than correcting you when you start to explain what this business is all about. So as they say, kill two birds with one stone, practice with prospects, and that'll help perfect your presentation. Oh, that sounded good, all right. Glad this is being recorded. All right, so that's number five, practice. Number six, record and listen to yourself. And there are so many people out there, me included, I feel funny when I hear myself on a recording but do it anyway. Listen to yourself, you know, do your presentation, record yourself and listen to yourself back. I remember very early on when I got started in this business and I started to practice the presentation, I would notice how quickly I was talking. And so many of us feel the need to talk really fast because we're nervous and we just kind of want to rush through it. <laughs> All right. A lot of times we do that subconsciously. So make sure you don't hesitate to just slow down, all right? And when you're recording yourself, a lot of times that is probably the number one feedback that people have about themselves. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm talking way too fast. So record yourself and you're gonna be able to, you know, listen to yourself and you'll be able to incorporate your own tips into your live presentation. So that was number six. Number seven, is you want to know your audience, all right? Now I wanna um, take this opportunity to shout out Team Epic, shout out to all of our leaders on the team. You guys are phenomenal. And one of the things that I rehearse with the team, we talk about it from time to time in our conference calls, that is when we do a three-way call. I know this isn't quite a presentation, but it is on a smaller scale. When we do a three-way call for the new folks, in other words, when you have a potential or a prospect once they've seen the information, we want to have a three-way conversation so that the person who introduced them to the, to the video, that person introduces an upline or a sideline executive, and we can help kind of close them and answer their questions to help them make an informed decision and help them get into the business. Well, 
before we do a three-way call, one of the things that we like to rehearse and one of the things we need to we need to know is to know who we're talking to. We have to know a little bit about our audience because when we're talking about, for instance, CBD, our chief product line, our, our main industry, we want to be able to correlate it with whatever that person's profession is, maybe a little bit about what they've shared with us. So for instance, if that person's a truck driver, we might want to steer the presentation and really highlight, for instance, the performance blast because that can help keep a truck driver awake when driving at night. Or maybe if that potential person is a chiropractor, we can really focus on the topical pain relief cream. So if that person's a nurse, we could focus on the anxiety relief behind CBD. But we have to know our audience, even if one person's a truck driver and the other person's a mechanic and you know maybe they're from different industries, you can start to tailor certain parts of the presentation to the professions that are in the room or on the line. So make sure you know your audience, know their age, their demographics, and you can start to cater your presentation a little bit more effectively, all right? So that is number seven, know your audience. Now number eight, you wanna break the ice. So I'm not, I'm not doing it on this presentation, but breaking the ice can be very simple, particularly if you are looking to sell something, if you're looking to sell a product or get somebody into the business, you want to break the ice. So for instance, it might be a game. You might wanna, in a game, it doesn't even really have to be a game. It could just be you going around the room and asking everybody to introduce themselves. So hey, state your name, um, what your profession is, and then a fun fact. That's actually a game, that's fun. So they say their name, where they're from, and then a fun fact about themselves. You know, like for me, one of my fun facts is if somebody pushes uh, a key on the telephone pad, I know what key it is, all right? Stuff like that, could be anything. But when you do that, you break the ice, now you're learning the professions in the room and people feel more relaxed, okay? And another way to break the ice is, you guys see this, if you guys are looking at me live on Facebook, I have a glass of water. One thing that doctor's offices routinely do, you know, business meetings, a great sales technique is to offer water. So if you're with somebody in person, always offer them water. Water calms the nerves. And I'm using water right now because my throat is parched, okay? But <laughs> make sure you offer water. Number nine is you wanna start off by asking questions. So if you guys have, are following me on Facebook or on Instagram, you'll notice that one of the techniques that I have adopted is before you, especially if you're doing a persuasive speech, if you're trying to sell something, start off by asking questions like, do you know anybody who's ever um, just woken up in the morning with a whole lot of pain, just like on their neck? Or do you know anybody who has trouble sleeping? Or do you know anybody who's looking to make some extra money or prepare for retirement? Or somebody who is just tired of paying high cable bills? or someone who's looking to get their credit up and maybe they're in the market to purchase a new car or home. Um, I actually learned that technique from Diamond SVP to Sheena Anderson because whenever she gives any sort of speech, she always starts it off with a series of questions and it's so effective in pulling the audience in. So you can start off by asking a few questions. They could be rhetoric where you don't expect an answer or they could be an audience participation question but it really does help, okay? So start by asking questions, it provokes interest. Number 10, you wanna be relatable. So one of the best things about this business is we can learn from all of these leaders, people who have um, achieved extraordinary success, like our own Diamond SVP, Tupac de Renicourt, D Diamond SVP, Tupac de Renicourt. One of the things that he does very effectively, I don't know if you guys catch it, but whenever he does the Winning Wednesdays call, the Morning Vitamin call, or he just shares a story during a presentation, he always talks about how he grew up from humble beginnings, how he grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And you know his story is so amazing. And it doesn't matter how high of an executive that you are, even if you're an executive trainer, that brand new person hears executive trainer, they're like, oh my gosh, this is an executive. So what you want to do, no matter what your position is, if you're anything above an IMR, tell your story, rehearse your story, and this helps you become relatable. 
You're going to have people out there who are going to be looking to you as a source of the information. So you want to be able to tell your story, just like my story, how I you know, walked into my boss's office. I was without a job. In fact, I actually fell into foreclosure. I had to rescue my home from foreclosure. My credit score was in the low 500s. Thanks to Chroma Credit, it's now much higher than that. But you know, you want to be relatable because you're going to come across somebody who relates to your story at least in the beginning. Okay, so be relatable. Um, another thing is number 11 is you want to be able to set an agenda. So if you remember, even at the beginning of this training, I said I have about 20 points. I'm talking about how to deliver the perfect presentation. Whether you're giving a presentation within five links or whether it's in your job or whether it's just for another business, you wanna make sure you set up an agenda. And in particular, if people don't know what they're coming in for, you can set an agenda, you can state some of the main points that you're going to cover, and then at the end, you can ask a question like, you know, I'm gonna, so for instance, you could say, I'm gonna touch on points A, B, C, and D. It's a way for you can, to make some extra money and our chief industries in CBD. So if I was able to get through that information in the next 30 minutes or so, would that be the most effective use of our time today? Most people are gonna say, sure. Or, you know, I'm touching on points A, B, C, one, two, three. Um, does that sound like a fair use of our time today? And, and another hint is I'm also raising my hand because when you do this, you say, is that all right? And when you raise your hand, most people are going to raise their hand or they're going to say yes. All right. So that's what you want to do. And similar to the previous point, though, number 12 is you want to use structure. So, for instance, if you're doing a Facebook live video and you want to go ahead and share the benefits of our sleep support spray. You can title your video something like five ways to get the best sleep of your life. And for instance, point number one might be <laughs> um, don't eat within two hours of going to bed. Point number two might be turn off your phone after 10 p.m. Point three, you know, and then the final point would be for you to promote your sleep support spray. And the fifth point is to, you know, you might want to consider this product. That introduces structure. When you have a title like that, five ways to do X, you know, three tips on doing Y, or it could even be how to blink. You know, when you do stuff like that, you introduce structure and it's much easier to follow rather than you just rambling on and on. OK, so set. So um, so you structure and it's going to help keep people much more engaged. That's number 12. Number 13 is slow down. I did that on purpose. Slow down. Um, one of the great trainings that I've attended had nothing to do with five links. This was actually a few years prior. I joined an organization known as Toastmasters. So for anyone out there, if you're looking to get better at doing an effective presentation, I highly recommend joining Toastmasters. There are chapters all over the country. I think they're actually international. They are international. You could join a chapter. They're very, very inexpensive and it allows you to practice presenting. And you have people in the audience who are designated to give you friendly feedback. One of the key pieces of feedback is something called the uh counter. And the uh counter basically is someone who goes around and uh, they don't go around. They actually count how many times you say uh, eh, and and a lot of times we say these as fillers. This is something that I've done a lot and I still do it, but I don't do it nearly as much as when I used to do it. So when you become cognizant of how many times you're using word fillers, you're going to get so much better at presenting. So make sure you're doing that and don't hesitate to slow down. You can pause because it just keeps people engaged. So I'm avoiding saying uh and uh and too, too much. Just pause, collect your thoughts, and keep it moving. That's number 13. And number 14 is actually part of 13. And that is a pause is better than an uh, okay? So 
Don't do that. Just pause. It's okay. They call it a pregnant pause, but just slow down. Number 15 is to interact with your audience. A great thing that our diamond does all the time, and I laugh about it all the time. I don't know if you know about this, uh, Tupac, but um, I have a few friends of mine, and we always go, yes or yes. <laughs> yes or yes. It's a great way to get your audience to speak back to you. It's almost like you've seen comedians and, and comedians go out there and they bomb. And a lot of times the reason why they bomb is because they'll give a joke and it's like quiet in the audience. And now the comedian's more nervous. And that means that they just pretty much bomb the joke, if not the whole show. But one of the things that you can do, even if your audience is muted and you're on Zoom, is you can always say yes or yes, or am I right? Give me a thumbs up if you agree. People are going to want to respond. People are going to want to reach back. And one of the things that you really want to do is make sure that your teammates, your partners, make sure that they are playing team. And for all of our partners who are on any call, make sure that you're giving the thumbs up, that you're raising your hand when the speaker says, who in here watches cable television? Every, everybody, raise your hand. Because the more that you show our audience participation, the higher the closing rate is going to be in that room. So make sure you are interacting with the audience. And even if you're not the presenter, that you're doing your part as well. In fact, the principle that Tupac de Renacourt goes through when he's presenting is a principle known as the Carnegie Principle. That basically means that in any area of sales or presenting that you're in, the more times that you can get your audience to say the word yes, the more likely it is that they're going to buy at the end of that presentation. So for instance, if you guys are familiar with GoPro by Eric Worre, he talks about the, the eight steps toward an, a successful invite. And the whole idea behind it is when you ask somebody, hey, if I were to share a presentation with you, with you would you check it out? They say yes. And you know, and the whole thing goes through like, okay, so when do you think you could watch it? They tell you when, then you say, great. So if I followed up with you on X, Y, and Z date, you would have seen it for sure, right? Then they say, yes, that's their second yes. Then they say, okay. then you say, okay, great. So is this the best phone number to reach you on? They're probably gonna say yes, that's three yeses. Great, you know, so that's the whole idea. You want them to get to say yes, and so you could say, hey, has anybody here ever experienced pain? Yes. Anybody here ever watched television? Yes. You want to get them to participate and you want to get them to say yes. OK, so that is number 15. Number 16 is you want to connect your thoughts and ideas. So just like how a lot of my points kind of relate, you want to do the same thing. If you're doing a slide presentation, when you're practicing, you wanna really get to know your slides because you can easily transition from one slide to the next. So if you know you're on your last product slide and the next slide is the show me the money, the compensation part of the presentation, you wanna be able to say, all right, great. We've gone through all the products. We have many things. However, we're gonna talk now about how to make money on all those products. Who in here is a show me the money person? See what we did? We connected the previous part to the next part. You want to work on your transitions and you want to start to think about your next point even while you're on your previous one. And the great way to do that is to tell stories. See how I did that? Point number 17 is to tell stories. All right. Whenever possible, you want to tell a story, starting with being relatable in the beginning. What's your story? Where did you grow up? How did you get approached? by or or how did you get approached by when it came to this business all right tell stories how did even if you have limited experience with a per, with a certain product or maybe you're not an svp yet you could talk about how one of your mentors or someone that you're working very closely with how they have reached their financial goals with this business how has a particular customer of yours alleviated their anxiety you know one of the stories i tell all the time is how a good friend of mine who's a nurse 
actually shared one of our nano snaps with her. She immediately felt a difference. She started using that before one of her shifts. She's a psychiatric nurse. And she said she never had a day, she couldn't remember a day where she was so clear-minded, clear-headed, and just did not experience as much stress as she normally had. And she bought a whole lot of product. I tell that story a lot because it's effective. So make sure you're telling stories, but make sure they're true, all right? Make sure they're true stories, but tell stories. Point 18, you want to use vocal dynamics. Okay, you don't want to have a presentation where you're monotone. Too many of us do that. When you're monotone, you lose your audience. When you're monotone, people are about to nod off. And if you see somebody who's about to nod off, call their name or say, hey, what's your name? And then ask them, do you know anybody who's, who, is, who experiences pain? You ever wake up in the morning and you're like, oh man, I'm getting older. <laughs> So the thing is, you want to keep your audience awake. And one of the things that you could do is you can use vocal inflections. One of the best people, if you really want to hear somebody who's good at it, best person I know who does that or who did that when he was alive was Jim Rohn. Listen to Building Your Network Marketing Business by Jim Rohn. He says, all right, if you're ready, say I'm ready. Good. I should take you around everywhere, everywhere, I, everywhere I go, right? You want to be able to pull people in by modulating your voice. Point number 19, use your hands. If you see me on Facebook Live, I'm using my hands. They call that gesticulation. One of the best people that I've seen who, who used his hands extremely well was former President Bill Clinton. He would always do this. And he would also do the eye thing. He would kind of squint his eyes. You want to be able to do that very effectively. Some of the best presenters use their hands quite effectively. And one of the easiest things to do is just to do like this whole, like the praying hands, cupping motion. When you can do that, it can really help get a point across. And then last but not least, you want to sum up your presentation. And that is purposely the last point because I'm gonna sum it up right now. Earlier tonight, or just now, I gave you about 20 tips on how to really perfect your own presentation. You want to listen to great presenters. You want to smile. You want to make eye contact, even if it's through Zoom. You want to stand up or at least sit up straight. You want to practice in front of a small audience. Record and listen to yourself. You want to know your audience. Know who's there. Break the ice. Start by asking questions. You want to be relatable. You want to set an agenda so they know what they're getting into. You want to use structure so that people know kind of like what's next how is this going to be laid out a lot of times people like to hear that you want to did i lose my spot you want to be relatable all right and you want to set an agenda oh yeah i already said that use structure next point slow down you want to not be afraid of using pauses also interact with the audience, connect thoughts and ideas, tell stories when possible, use vocal dynamics, use your hands, and then sum up your presentation. So all that being said, I took a little over 30 minutes, but this was right along where I wanted it to be, thanks to my practice sessions. So thank you so much for your time and attention today. I hope you guys took something away from today. Now go out and give your best presentation ever. So that being said, I want to go ahead and pass the call right back to our Diamond SVP Tupac de Renancourt. Until next time, God bless and have a wonderful evening. Take care. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Ricardo Suver, Senior Vice President in Northern California, doing your thing. And uh, a lot of what you said, I've been practicing for so many years, hopefully, individuals struggling with uh, talking in front of people will take notes and take action and um, they say that it's good uh, when you stand up your check goes up that's the thing in our industry so hopefully we get more people to stand up so that their checks can go up and again thank you so much for that uh, expertise that knowledge of being able to communicate 
on a higher level. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our call. Have an exceptional rest of your evening. Do something today before you go to sleep. It's so only 9 o'clock. Do something today to take your business to the next level. Peace and with interest. Uh, let's see, what else can you do? Drop a sample off to somebody, okay? Make them, I mean, if you have anything that helps people go to sleep, whether it's CBD, nano, or, or, or sleepy spray, guess what? That's something that at this time of night, um, people will appreciate. So that being said, and also when you sample it, if, you, if there isn't a sale but someone does like the, the product, ask for a product review. You know, uh, whether it's uh, a, a video testimonial or something like that that you can post, uh, that, that works well as well. So don't forget the vitamin call on this same line tomorrow morning starting the, for the week, uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with uh, Senior Vice President Cynthia Brain. And that concludes our call. Have a good night.